Uh, we're going to get ready to start our Christmas program, Unfrozen, Do You Want to Meet a Savior? And it just so happens that uh, three of our junior high kids are in choir, and they uh, had a song at their concert that goes with our program. So they're going to share that song first, Do You Want to Build a Snowman? So our Christmas program this year is Unfrozen, and we'll do parts one and two today. The Kingdom of Frozen Hearts, Lord Jesus Come, and We Come to Jesus. So uh, our actors are Hannah Brigham and Hannah Geilinger, our princesses, and Brennan Cavanaugh and Jacob McClucky are our narrators. And then we also have uh, Bridget Jetson, and Brennan will be playing a part a little bit later. And uh, our little kids are all our listeners, so that's why they're in their jammies. They're going to listen to the story. So, Unfrozen, part one. Once upon a time, these words have been the start of countless stories. We hear once upon a time, we know what will follow. A tale of adventure and wonder. A legendary story of heroes and villains. In the end, good triumphs over evil, and everyone lives happily ever after. These tales have become familiar to all of us. We know that the lowly pau pauper will turn out to be a prince. We know that the king will triumph over evil. The once cold, dead heart will become unfrozen. After a while, the story loses its wonder and excitement. These, the Christmas story begins once upon a time. We don't want to forget the power of that story. How the baby born in a manger is our Prince of Peace. How the King Jesus established a kingdom that will never end, how he restores the frozen hearts of people and gives them new life. We invite you now to join us for an evening of joyful worship, playful presentation, and a fresh examination of the birth
birth of Jesus, the one who took what was a cold and lifeless and made it unfrozen again. Once upon a time, there were two young girls. One was named Inga. Hi. And the other was named Olga. Hello there. Inga and Olga were both princesses. They also happened to be sisters. Oh, we're princesses and sisters, just like in that movie Pearl. Stop. No, it's not like anything. Anyway, Inga and Olga loved each other very much. But unfortunately, Olga had special powers, special powers that she couldn't control. Are you sure this isn't like that movie? It does sound a lot like it. No, now be quiet and let me continue with the story. I bet mom and dad separate us because of your powers. The girl's parents grew afraid of Olga's powers. In order to protect both of their daughters, they separated them. Olga was shut up in her room. She never saw Inga anymore, and no one ever told Inga about Olga's special powers or why she couldn't see her sister. Do you want to build? No, you can't ask her that. Fine. Would you like to go grab a burger? No, thanks, I can't. How about throw a baseball around or play with dolls or something? Maybe go catch a movie, the one about the two sister princesses? Sorry, I can't. Year after year, this went on. Inga grew more and more sad each time her sister rejected her, and Olga grew more and more hopeless as time went on and she could not control her powers. Well, that's depressing. It really is, isn't it? I can't see how things will ever get better. This is how life will be from now on. No, things are bound to improve. What makes you say that? Well, this is a fairy tale, isn't it? Don't these once upon a time stories always end with a happily ever after? Do they? Sure they do. I wish I had your optimism, but like the narrator said, I'm without hope. Here, I'll prove it to you. Hey, that's mine. Let's see, guy with a reindeer, snow monster, lots of singing. Ah, here it is. And they all lived happily ever after. See? I guess it does turn out okay after all. Feel better now? I do. Do you want to go get a burger now? Sounds good. Here's your storybook back. To be continued. We would all like to know what's at the back of the book. We want to know that the story has a happy ending. We'd like to believe that all of our suffering and strife serve some greater purpose, and we want to know that at the end of it all, we will be okay. God gave the people of Israel a peek at the back of the book. He gave a, world, he gave a word to the prophet of Isaiah. It was a word of assurance, a word that God had not forgotten them, a word that he would send his son to be their savior. The people walking in darkness have seen great light on those living and in the land of deep darkness as a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you, as the people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For us, for to us a child has born, to us a son is given, and the govern, government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time and forever, from that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 3 and 6 through 7. Lord Jesus, come. The Christmas story reminds us that there is thrill and expectation. When we put our hope in God, our waiting is not in vain. He will provide in power and love. His timing is perfect and his deliverance is absolute. We don't just wait with sort of resigned patience. We wait on God with excitement, confidence, and joy. Lord Jesus, come. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. And in his word, I put my hope. I wait for the Lord. More than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. Psalm 130, 5-8. And now we continue with our tale of two sisters, Princess Olga and Princess Inga. Princess Olga had special powers that she could not control. No, and we're not going to start that again. Olga was afraid that she might one day hurt someone with her out-of-control powers, so she decided that the best thing to do would be to leave the kingdom and live out in the cold, barren wasteland alone. Okay, see you later. Bye. When she was by herself, Olga built for herself. Well, let me guess. She built a huge palace made of snow and ice. I've seen this movie. No, for your information, Olga built for herself a cardboard shack to live in. I what? She what? Yes, she decided she didn't need a great big icy palace, so she got a big cardboard box and lived in that. 
Okay. No, wait, that's wrong. She's supposed to live in a big palace. Sorry, I'm the one telling the story here. Are you just going to settle for living in a cardboard box? It's not so bad. It's warmer than an icy palace, and I think if I get a few more refrigerator boxes, I'll add on to the east wing. This is crazy. We're princesses, royalty. Royalty is supposed to live in luxury and grand palaces. We're supposed to have the finest of everything. Not every royal person lives like that. Name one. Jesus. Jesus? Jesus? He's not in this story. When I was going back there getting my cardboard box, I ran into some shepherds. They were going to meet baby Jesus, and he's staying in the stable right now, sleeping in the trough the animals sleep out of. Makes a cardboard box not sound so bad. Shepherds? There aren't any shepherds in this story. Didn't the shepherds think it was odd that a king would be living in a barn? They didn't mention it. I think they were too excited about meeting Jesus. Said everyone should meet him. That does sound exciting. Do you want to go meet him? I do. Wait, we haven't finished our story. Come on, let us go. To be continued. The long-awaited Savior has been born. In a sleepy little town of Bethlehem he came. The tale has been told many times, but we gather together now with new ears, listening with expectancy and curiosity, hearing the story again like the first time. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, they, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her four, firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of God shone around them. They were terrified, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see about this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about his, this child, and all who had heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasure, treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Luke chapter 2, verses 4 through 20. 2,000 years ago, the angels invited the shepherds to meet this newborn king. The shepherds accepted the invitation, laying down their staffs and leaving their flock behind. They knew that what awaited them was more important than anything they were leaving. Today, we, were, we are given a similar invitation to meet Jesus. We have to lay some things aside and leave other things behind, but what God offers us in Jesus is so much more than we could ever give up. The Holy Spirit calls to us to meet Jesus. Let us go. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful for those who keep the demands of his covenant. For the sake of your name, Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Psalm 25, 4-7. Uh, that concludes uh, our first portion of the Christmas program. Come back next week to how it all turns out. And uh, I forgot to mention a big thanks to the high school class because they are our long readers, which you see how many little kids we have. We don't have a lot of reading parts. <laughs> so we are done. All right. Great job. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, I used the...